Welcome to the Palo Alto Network's Unit 42 Wireshark Workshop. My name is Brad Duncan and I am a Threat Intelligence Analyst with Palo Alto Network's Unit 42 team. And this, this is the first video of the Wireshark Workshop. It's part one, introduction and prerequisites. Let's take a look at the overview. First, I will cover an introduction that contains a bit of history, who might benefit from this workshop, and where to access the packet capture files so you can follow along with this training. Next, we'll discuss prerequisites. What do you need to get the most out of this workshop? What knowledge and skills are required for this type of work? And finally, I will review how I prepare an environment for Wireshark. It's all pretty short. This is a relatively quick video of information necessary before we dive into this workshop and begin using Wireshark. I focus on Windows-based malware. I often review malware samples of this type of malware that are sent through mass distribution methods like malicious spam. In my day-to-day -day work, I frequently run samples of this type of malware in live environments, in live Windows-based environments, and I record packet captures of the network traffic from these infections. The term PCAP is a contraction of the words packet and capture, and I find PCAPs a very effective way to identify and understand many types of Windows-based malware. And this Wireshark workshop is a series of videos to help viewers use Wireshark to investigate network traffic from Windows-based malware infections. But many people working various jobs in information security do not have a lot of experience reviewing and investigating PCAPs of malicious network traffic. So with that in mind, I developed a traffic analysis workshop designed to help people better understand Windows-based malware infection traffic. Starting in 2018, I ran full-day workshops at various security conferences to share the knowledge I've gained over the years. Here's a picture of me in Australia at the 2018 annual Ossert conference running one such workshop. I continued teaching various versions of these workshops in person until travel was restricted in early 2020 due to the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. These workshop videos will attempt to replicate what had formerly been in-person live training. As I mentioned earlier, the Wireshark workshop is a series of videos, and the first video is the one you're currently watching. Our second video will be a suggested way of setting up Wireshark. Our third video will be host identification, because if you do identify a Windows infection on your network, you need to be able to identify the host that it happened to. Part four, our fourth video, will be non-malicious activity, because before we can understand what malicious traffic looks like, we have to have some idea of what normal non-malicious activity looks like. And finally, our fifth video will be an introduction to Windows-based malware infections. So this is a very straightforward introduction, and there will definitely be more videos planned. These are just the first five that will get you up and running. The most important part of this introduction is where to get the PCAPs and PDF copies of the slides used for these videos. They are available on our GitHub page at github.com slash pan-unit42 slash wireshark-workshop. All of these are zip archives. They're stored in zip archives and they're password protected. The password is unit42. Unit42 your password to a better understanding of malicious network traffic. Let's grab the PCAPs for our second video for setting up Wireshark. Let's go to the GitHub page. I'm currently in an ex-Ubuntu desktop. I'm going to start my web browser. 
Go to the GitHub page, PAN-Unit42 slash Wireshark Workshop. Going to grab the Workshop Part 2 PCAPs. We'll download them. Saving the file. Here's the zip archive. I'm going to extract the PCAPs. It is password protected. So I'll type in unit 42. And here are the PCAPs. To get the most out of this workshop, you should have some basic knowledge of network traffic. You should also be familiar with Wireshark. Now I'm purposefully vague on what exactly is a basic knowledge of network traffic. I'm also vague about what being familiar with Wireshark means. Why? Because some people lack confidence. My advice is to give this workshop a try and it will become apparent fairly early on if you're in over your head. Some of the PCAPs for this workshop contain malware within the network traffic, which can cause problems if you're viewing the PCAP within a Windows environment. So I recommend using a non-Windows environment for your Wireshark setup, something like BSD, Linux, or Mac OS. Some people cannot escape having a Windows environment, so they'll set up a virtual machine and run Linux within that and use Wireshark within Linux within that VM. Now, if you do this, you must have enough resources, so I recommend at least two gigabytes of RAM dedicated to that VM. I recommend at least a dual core CPU, and I really, really recommend more RAM and more CPU cores if at all possible. One of the things that I saw when I used to teach these in-person workshops is that people would bring laptops with high resolution displays and when they would try to follow along with the workshops, the font size of their environment would be so incredibly small, it was hard to see the information. As a result, I always encourage people to set up their environment where you increase the default font size of your desktop environment. Also in this part of the environment setup, I'll cover installing Wireshark within a Linux environment. And then we will review how to increase the default font size in Wireshark. And finally, we'll check your version of Wireshark to make sure you're running at least version 3.x, which is what I recommend that people use. This is the desktop environment that I will be using for this series of videos for the Wireshark workshop. It is Xubuntu version 21.04. I picked this because it is the most recent version of Ubuntu, and I picked the Xubuntu, which runs the XFCE window manager, because it's easier for me to manipulate the environment and increase the font size. I also pick this version of Xubuntu because it has a relatively recent version of Wireshark that is just perfect for demonstrating how to set up Wireshark and some of the capabilities of the more recent version of Wireshark. But the resolution of the screen is 1920 by 1080 pixels, that's high definition, but the default font size is 9 points, which makes it extremely hard to see. So I'm going to increase the font size by going to the Settings Manager, going to Appearance, going to Fonts, and the default font size is 9 points. I'm going to boost that to 14 points. Make it much easier to read. I'm going to boost the default monospace font from 10 to 13 points. Now when I go back to the Settings Manager, I can see everything a bit more. 
I'm going to increase the panel size When I talk about the panel, I mean the title bar. I'm going to increase the width of that because it is still very small. For the window manager, I want to increase the default font size for that from 9 points to 14 points because when I'm looking at menus from the title bar of Wireshark, it's going to have an extremely small font size. I need to increase that. And finally, for the terminal window, it also has a small font size, so I want to increase that as well. I'm going to boost that to 16. And now everything looks a little bit more visible. It's much easier if you have a high resolution display on your laptop to see this. And these are just suggested font sizes. You can play around in your environment and see what is the best font size for you? All right, I have the terminal window. First thing I'm going to do, sudo apd get update. Why am I doing this? This is a way of making sure that everything is fully patched and updated for this installation of Ubuntu. And I currently have all the latest updates. In order to get Wireshark on your Xubuntu installation, you need to install it. And this for me is the easiest way to do it. sudo apt-get install Wireshark. Now I already have Wireshark installed on here because I don't want to have you guys sit and watch that scroll through and wait another few minutes for that to install. So I have Wireshark. It should be listed under Internet. And here it is. All right, everything looks good here. I'm going to go to the downloads where I had the PCAPs that we downloaded earlier. Now I'm going to go through into edit preferences. I'm going to go to columns. I'm sorry, fonts and colors. All right, I'm already at 14 points here. I think I'm going to boost that just a little bit more. All right, everything is a little bit easier. It's a little bit easier to see everything. If I want to go through my menu options, they're all nice and big. They're in 14 point font. The last thing I'm going to do is look at about Wireshark and double check and see what version I'm using. This one says version 3.4.4. And that's it. You have finished the introductory video to the Palo Alto Networks Unit 42 Wireshark workshop. We covered an introduction of this workshop, the requirements to getting the most out of this workshop, and setting up an environment for Wireshark. Our next video in this series, the second video, will be part two, setting up Wireshark. Thank you for watching.